I'm Mike Shrews. And I'm Timis. And you're listening to... The Monster Cast. Episode 48. Uh, Merry Christmas. Welcome back, everybody, to the MonsterCast, the podcast where we watch and talk about the monsters. Uh, I think our intro video cut out really soon. It may have. I wasn't paying attention. So sorry about that for everybody watching the video because, yeah, it it definitely cut out way before it should have. It didn't feel like eight seconds, I'll just tell you that right now. Uh, I am... (laughs) Of course, your host, Mike Shrews, here with my co-host and friend, Tivis. Tivis, how are you doing today, dude? I'm doing all right. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I kind of missed it. We haven't been talking about monsters for two weeks, man. Yeah, I two know. Two weeks. The world's been falling apart. Oh, all because we didn't talk about the monsters, I know. All right. <laughs> um... So, real quick, guys, uh, before we even get to the dirty work, this is going to be our last episode for the year. Um, We're doing the Christmas episode right here. Uh, I think this is coming out right at the beginning of December, so you get us right away um, for your first episode in December. And um, with that, I mean, you know, that's it. You'll, You'll see us after the new year. You know? Yeah, where we start monsters today. The monsters Unless something today. comes along which requires a special episode, but as of right now, we're, we right. don't have anything. Yeah, if we if we end up booking like an interview or something, then we'll probably do that um, and toss it up before then. But if not, you'll just see us uh, next year uh, for the monsters today. So definitely get on top of uh, finding that or watching it or re you know reading about it or whatever i know it's a very hard one out there to find so um if you want you can reach out to me as well since i uh, was able to uh obtain procure. <laughs> yeah procure a copy of it so uh definitely hit me up um if you guys want to and on all uh, social medias at the mike shrews or you can just hit us up at the monster cast on facebook instagram and twitter all at the Monster Cast, as well as YouTube.com slash at The Monster Cast. Um, you can go directly there and find everything that you need and see our pretty ugly faces, of course, uh, on YouTube. Um, you can also email us at TheMonsterCast.Outlook.com where you can reach out to us if you want to be a guest on the show, if you want to just tell us your monster stories, all that fun stuff. And you can also go to themonstercast.com where all of our content, videos, audio, articles, imagery, all that stuff is all in one space together. Um, And you can even reach our merch shop that way too or just go to themonstercast.com slash merch. And there we have special shirts made specifically for you guys, the monsters, fans, monster cast audience, whatever. Um, out there so definitely swing on over there and uh real quick since it is the last one of the year i do want to remind everybody to go to the monstercast.com slash remind mag and you can order yourself your own personal copy of the monsters october edition of remind magazine there you um i don't think we're gonna pitch this anymore as the new year's coming up but uh you can definitely grab yourselves a copy of that still from remind mag and um just you know if they ask where you got it from just say hey the monster cast told us about it so it's always fun they've been really good to us us talk about it for the month so we're talking we've been bringing it up because it's so awesome (laughs) yeah yeah we were only supposed to give it like a week or so before the episode or before the uh, Magazine. magazine came out but I decided we would talk about it continually until um, the end of the year. So this is the end it's of the really, year. really, yeah, something you guys, if you really like the monsters, it's something to check out. Like honestly. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and uh, as for today, uh, we are going to be talking about um, what, Tivis? Uh, 
1996 movie, The Monster Scary Little Christmas. All right. Yes, uh, The Scary Little Christmas. This is the one that Daniel Roebuck uh, didn't really find. What, what, what did he say? I, I forget what it was exactly. Um, yeah. Is this the one he was? This the one he auditioned for? Or was it the other one? Oh, I think it was the other one. Yeah, it was uh, Monsters. Uh, oh, jeez, they all here they all the start monsters. the same. Yes, here come the monsters. They all start to sound the lake. <laughs> uh, well, this one aired. I don't December? think it was October. Yeah, it was December. Why did I put October in my notes? <laughs> I'm so used to putting October for this family. Uh, December 17th, 1996. Written by Ed Ferreira and Kevin Murphy. Now, Mike, you may recognize Ed Ferreira for the one time he acted on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. Or you may know him from his many, many writing credits on pretty much every WWF and WCW wrestling show and even major pay-per-views in the 90s. So he wrote for both? He wrote for both. He started with WWF and went to WCW. Oh. Um, now, Kevin Murphy also worked on uh, Weird Science, the TV show, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. Uh, okay. As well as Desperate Housewives and Defiance. So those are some notable stuff from them. So he was already in Mockingbird Heights with Desperate Housewives then. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, no, wait. This, that was after this probably, right? Desperate Housewives kids on Yeah, this was after this. <laughs> that was 04 to so. Um, Directed by Ian Emmis? Ems? I'm just going to let you go with the names today. <laughs> yeah, I figured you would. Uh, he uh, directed three Pink Floyd music videos, uh, 36 episodes of Bookaboo, <laughs> which is a kid show about a drum playing dog that needs a story to be able to play, and uh, eight episodes of uh, Queens of Mystery, which is still currently airing. So we may get uh, more from him from that. Um, now, I'm going to start with my trivia early. Uh, the entire cast of Here Come the Monsters were planned to be in this movie. But okay. Edward Herman asked for a small raise. To come up with that raise, the producers had the great idea of taking away the money from every other cast member. Well, they got together and decided, nah, we're just not going to come back. So that is why we have a brand new cast it, for this one. Including uh, Herman, right? He, he yeah, agreed yeah, not no. to come back to... Yeah, he won okay. the raise, but he wasn't going to do it at the detriment to his castmates. Right, right. So, which no, that's probably good... because the one that they did probably did good, well enough to where they felt like they needed the raise. Yeah, so yeah. now we have... Good for uh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam McMurray as Herman Munster. Uh, now, this guy has a ton of one-offs that I recognize, like... Mm -hmm. uh, Raising Hope, uh, Breaking Bad, like, ton of stuff. But uh, what I recognize him most from is uh, playing Supervisor Patrick O'Boyle on King of Queens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, my love of sitcoms, so. Yeah. Uh, we got Anne Magnuson as Lily Munster. Magnuson. Magnuson, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's a you, but uh, she was on. Uh, she's a voice actress, and she did twenty three episodes of All Grown Up uh, as Miss O'Keats. Now, uh, for those who don't know, that was the sequel to Rugrats, where they were teenagers. Uh, she played. There's, uh, a, lo there's a lot of um, uh, Rugrats uh, stuff here. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah. Um, she was in two episodes of Titans, which is. A DC show that has suddenly become good in the past couple years. I mean, I, you know. 
the live action show, right, on uh, HBO yes. Max? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, the one that just yep, yep. started its fourth season and uh, was in two episodes of Star Trek Picard playing Admiral Kirsten Clancy. Okay. Uh, we have Bug Hall as Eddie Munster. Yeah. Uh, he played. Who? Bra- oh, go was ahead. Alfalfa and the Little Rascals. <laughs> Yes, he was. That was his first acting credit, too. The Little Rascals was? Yeah. Well, his oh, first one nice. listed here. He uh, was also, because you said the writer, I'm sorry. Um, he is also Adam Zielinski in Honey, uh, We Shrunk Ourselves as well. So yeah. I, I found the, the similar, the, as soon as you said that that guy wrote on uh, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, the show, I was like, oh, that's kind of nifty that they got this one actor, like, as soon as I saw him, I was like, wait, is that Alfalfa? <laughs> like, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was in a... Brian... He played Brian Kelly in Kelly Kelly, which only aired for one season in 1998. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got... Uh, or He also played Arthur... Arthur... I don't know why I spelled that incorrectly... Arthur Davidson in the three-part 2016 Harley and the Davidson, which uh, Davidsons, which was uh, incredibly interesting, especially if mm. you're a motorcycle guy. Like I watched that with my dad. And, oof, that was cool. <laughs> uh, Sandy Barron as Grandpa Munster. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on a sec. Go back to Bug oh, oh. Hall for a sec. I didn't okay. realize they did a 2014 Little Rascals movie, and he yes. was he guest starred in it too. That's kind of oh, cool. cool. He I was, never watched uh, that one, but I, I remember ice cream it came man. Out. I, I don't remember it coming out at all. <laughs> and I, I'm the awesome. one with kids. <laughs> but it's kind of cool that he came back in there. Yeah. Um, it is. All right, go on to Grandpa. All right, Sandy Barron is Grandpa Monster. Uh, now he wrote for uh, the Bill Cosby Show. Both uh, he did a story and a teleplay for mm-hmm. different episodes. Uh, we will actually meet him again because he was in Monsters Today. Uh, okay. n- not as anyone important, but still, it's right. exciting. He um, showed up in there. That's yeah, awesome. he played Morty in Leprechaun 2. Yep. And uh, Jack Klompus in four episodes of Seinfeld. <laughs> and yeah. unfortunately, he did, did pass away a couple years after this. Did he not write on Seinfeld 2? Or... I, I uh, swore that I've seen his name on Seinfeld no, before. Maybe he, it was just the He character. only did the, the Bill Cosby show in Sonny and Cher, Nitty Gritty Hour. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, he did pass away, what, like a couple years right after they shot this yeah, movie? 2001. So. so five years later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At age 64, still young. Still young. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, you want to go to Miss Dimwitty? Yeah, Mary uh, Warnoff. Which, again, a lot of uh, one-off uh, appearances that I recognize. Um, this isn't the same actress from the last one that played the same character, is she? No, no, none of those came back except for the neighbor. Okay. Well, no, I'm saying is, this is the neighbor. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. You're right. But, but is she the same actress? Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's the only one who came back. All right. It's still as nosy as ever and even more rude in this movie <laughs> um we gotta think uh, in 96 too like i mean some of those other yeah. actors were moving on to a lot bigger things not that the monsters wasn't you know a good franchise to be a well, part of still but yeah if yeah. you want a uh a uh connection uh to uh, other monster stuff she was in devil's rejects so oh nice yeah uh, let's see. We got Ed Hell, Ed Gay. I'm sorry, as Larry. Wait, who, is she? I'm sorry. In Devil's Rejects, is she the Madame? I've who is she? never seen that Let movie, see. so I can't tell you. Abby. Abby. Okay. We have a lot of names, though. I'm sorry. Go on, go on, go on. Sorry. Uh, Ed Gay as Larry, which I'm surprised you're not freaking out about, since his first acting credit was Howard T. Duck. Mm-hmm. In a little 1986 George Lucas film called Howard the Duck. Well, see, here's the thing. So, as much as I love Howard the Duck, I didn't watch it until, like, after my first kid was born, which is sad. 
Um, no one ever told me about that movie when I was a kid. But I do remember he was part of Station in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. And uh, that was when Station was two, in, two small like uh, little creatures and Station was formed by those two joining together. Station. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, he was also in the Weird Science TV show, which is probably how was they uh, got to know him. Yeah, nice. Um, then we have Arturo Gill as Lefty, <laughs> the asshole elf. <laughs> yeah, and he was another member of Station. So, yeah, and uh, he was in Spaceballs. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just doing a quick. Yeah, yeah, Third yeah, Rock good. from the Sun, he was in. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good chance to get through this list. I watched this oh, two no, days ago when I had an appointment you're yesterday. Fine. So you're yeah. fine. You're fine. Uh, he was in. He was an Ewok in Cantina Karaoke. That's. It's kind of cool great. though that Ed Gale and Arturo Gill worked together in '87 because Bogus Journey came out in like '87, I think '87, '86. They come back again and work together ten years later, still, and you can tell the chemistry is there too with uh, how they act in this film. So it's oh, pretty yeah. cool, definitely cool. Um, who, Mark, who do we have playing Santa? Uh, an Australian native call, uh, named Mark Mitchell. Uh, he played such Otto... a freaking comic book name, Mark Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He was in Inspector Gadget 2 and mm. Farscape, but uh, he also played Otto Von Meister in the Genie Down Under TV series and the Genie yeah. Down Under 2 t- TV series. So, <laughs> uh, we got Jeremy Callahan as Tom. Yeah. Uh, going through his list real quick because this is Zena. as far as I got. Xena. Yep. Uh, Farscape. Farscape. Beastmaster. Can't forget Beastmaster. Yeah. Uh, Elaine Hendricks as Marilyn Munster. You have a lot of background noise today, dude. I know. I have people home. <laughs> Just I mean, even it. more than normal. I. Are you sure you got the right mic on? I I believe so. Elaine. Elaine Hendricks as Marilyn Munster. Now, my wife, I watched this with my wife, and she thought she recognized her, but we went through her list, and we didn't see anything that we may have seen. Um, I mean, we got Get Smart, obviously. There. Hopefully, this is better for the uh, computer Oh, yeah, people. that's back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, for the audio listeners out there, your audio is still going to be good, but for the video people... There's going to be a lot more background noise for the first part of this video. I apologize. I didn't change my mic, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it reset our mics on us. Yeah. Uh, she was in Charmed, Ghost Whisperer. Who? Uh, Elaine uh, Hendricks? Elaine Hendricks, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people will know her as I did um, as soon as I saw her from The Parent Trap with... Um, uh, What's that girl's name? She became like a big druggie and now she's like recouped now. Lindsay Lohan? Lindsay Lohan, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, with Lindsay Lohan, the parent trap with Lindsay Lohan from 98. Uh, she played the the like stepmom thing or whatever was like trying to hook That's up with That's where the we dad. recognized her from. Yeah. Yeah, she was the mom or the guy, the the their dad was supposed to marry her. And they like kind of played it so that you know she wouldn't. Um, which this one that only came out two years after this, and she looked a hell of a lot younger in this movie than in that movie. Like, she looked a lot older. Um, maybe it's the makeup they did, I'm not sure. Because yeah. I was trying to figure it out, I was like, this was only 96, so like the age, like it, it was weird for me because we're usually used to seeing like Marilyn is like. Besides, uh, Pat Priest was a lot younger in every other iteration that we saw her as. Yeah. Although Pat Priest is the best. <laughs> Just going to uh, say that. So next, uh, we got John Allen as Mr. Uh, Polinsky. And I, I did not recognize 
anything that I, you know stood out to me. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, Noel Ferrer as the door knocker. Nothing stood out to you. Mission Impossible, bro. The TV show. I the never one watched that it. They stole. And the I don't like from. the movies. So. <laughs> Yes. There uh, we go. I'm not right, into um, spy stuff. Uh, and then we have Noel Farrier, Farrier as yep. the door knocker, uh, which was a really cool character. Yeah, didn't I swear they called him Charlie at some point, or uh, uh, not Charlie, uh, Cloyd at one point, and like, wait a minute, is this like work, Cloyd? <laughs> I don't know. Um, he did a movie called Computer Ghosts, and now I want to watch that movie just based on the title. <laughs> uh i hate the holidays watching bad movies uh, short yeah well i sent you a couple that i found yeah yeah, you did you sent me some uh yesterday all right uh bruce spence is mr gateman which i don't like that they're going with the mean mr gateman that we saw at the later half of the show yeah um yeah yeah, we'll he get was, into uh, that once we start talking the movie, but right. But uh, another, um, he was a Lord of the Rings alum, a Star Wars, Dark City for people who want to watch the original Matrix. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Oh wow, uh, the, the, dude, just rip, they, those brothers ripped everything off. Just saying, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. That's where most Sisters. people will recognize him. Oh yeah, there's. Yeah, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, is where most people will recognize him because he's actually you can see more of his facial features in that movie. Yeah. Um, Gods of Egypt. It's actually a pretty cool movie. It's, it's pretty bad, but it's pretty cool too. <laughs> um, and uh, last one I'll say is uh, Australia. There we go. All right. Then we have uh, Kate Who's Fisher. Tian? Who's Tian Medon from Star Wars? Tion Medon. It had to be an alien, right? Yeah, spell it for me. T I O N M E D O N. That's the character he played. All right. Um. Oh. Yeah, he's the uh, guy that Obi Wan greets at Utapau. Okay. All right. Um. And he was also in Finding Nemo as Chum. <laughs> <laughs> That was Bruce Spence. There we go. All right, let's get through the rest of these guys. All right, we got Kate Mr. Fisher was the last good one. Uh, as the pretty girl on bar, and her name, actual name is uh, oh boy, Zip Zip Zipporah, Zipporah Mal- Malkai. Yes, Zipora Malkai. The T is silent. Yep. And, uh, unfortunately, I don't recognize anything else that she's been in. Just quickly going through it. Uh, Ann Dale as Mrs. Stein. Uh, this was her last acting credit, unfortunately. But oh, that's sad. Yeah. Oh, she was in the stuff. The stuff is such a great movie. Everyone should go watch that. Sorry, we should we should like not do all of these actors because then I'll just get into all the other movies. <laughs> they deserve uh, their recognition as well. Yeah, uh, uh, Patricia, Patricia Hulse, Hulson as uh, Mrs. Marta Grano. Yeah. Uh, a very in... short list here. Uh, Museum Guard, Superman Returns, you know, yeah. uh, kind of a lot of background. Uh, Mrs. Daisy and Dr. Doctor. Spellbinder. She just plays woman in Spellbinder, but Spellbinder's fun. Go watch Spellbinder, too. Uh, Dominic Condon, uh, Condon, Condon. Condon yep. as uh, Spooky Onlooker number one. I have no idea who that is. Probably one of the decorations. Yeah, I'm not sure what that one. Oh was. no, no, the, they're on here too. Execution or effigy? <laughs> Spooky on the oh, those are the guys that came and looked at the stuff and were like, oh, these are really great art pieces. Like they're they're genius. And oh, stuff okay, like that. I got yeah, you, yeah. got you, got you. Got Not you. the actual uh, judges, but the guys that like he brought around to like just show off the stuff. Yeah, that he got his like art um, uh, stuff from. He tried to say, you guys just didn't go to art class like I did, or you're not sophisticated <laughs> enough like me to see the true art. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I'm just gonna shoot through a lot of these yeah, last shoot, ones because you know they do a lot of background characters. But if you see anything, yeah. just go ahead and speak up. Uh, Jonathan Biggs as spooky onlooker number two. Alan uh, Zittner as cop. <laughs> I love <laughs> these naming conventions. Um, go ahead. Daniel uh, Kelly K- Kella as Glenn. Uh, we got Michael Hamilton as Hector uh, Barb. Barbarel. He's only got three Hector acting Barbie, credits. To Barbie, his Barbie, name. Yeah. Barbie, Barbary, Barbary, Barbary. Uh, remember, uh, um, she mentions him, and Santa's like, "Oh yeah, I know, I know him," or something like that. I don't remember. What oh, was. gotcha. Oh no, um, no, Hector Barbary. That's the bad kid. That's the asshole kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Eddie talks yeah, to yeah, him. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm Mudway as uh, Burly Biker. He's only got two acting credits to his name. This was the last. A lot of bikers Char- back then. Charles Russell as Executioner Elf. This is his only acting credit. Uh, Michael Tauro as Effigy Elf. Once again, last uh, thing that that person was in. David Anderson as Mr. Matagrano. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was Doogie in Echo Point. I'm not familiar with that, but, you know. Uh, Viv Carter as irate shop owner. <laughs> Holy shit, there's so many in here. <laughs> Julie Herbert as nurse. We're getting through them pretty quick. Beth Armstrong as Salvation Santa. Uh, Jocelyn Colby, Colby as chimney sweep, which why was there a chimney sweep in this? We'll get into it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through these all at once. Robert St- uh, Stater. Straight, Brett- stay there. Brett Samuels, Michael Thrist, Robert Yearly, Neil Johns, Peter Leesk, and Barry Evans, all as bikers, one through seven. Here we go. I'm sure some of those guys actually reprised their biker roles in uh, Police Academy. Um, Uh Well, if they did, it wasn't recorded because they all only have one acting credit. Oh, okay. So they were probably just like local stand-ins. Christian Menon as uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. People will... Uncle Gilbert! Fucking Uncle, Uncle Gilbert. Gilbert, get it yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, uh, now we're getting to the family members, which so uh creature from the Black Lagoon, he did he was in Mission Impossible 2, Queen of the Dam, The Punisher, the original Punisher one with um uh uh uh, uh Dolph, Long- Dolph Longren. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um there we go. Yeah, uh, we got... just in case the mummy. He was in Return to Oz. Yes. I'll just say that one because I want to watch that again. I was about to <laughs> skip him on accident. Uh, Fran Sos Baquet as Hockey Mask Psycho. They quit. Hockey Mask Psycho, yep. Andrew Windsor uh, as Mole, Mole Man. Man. Renee Escar as a zombie. Louis Pollard as another zombie. There you go. <laughs> Uh, uh, Brian Langsworth as a third, third zombie. Ben Grieve as werewolf, which, come on, Lester. It's Uncle Lester. Lester. Yep. We have family members. Jason Taylor as everyone's favorite Phantom of the Opera. Cousin Phantom of the Opera. Cousin yep. Phantom. Uh, Great Brett to Wood, see him again. Invisible Man. Uh, David Anthony as a Cyclops. Cyclops. Donald Cook as a Hunchback of Notre Dame. Okay. Troy Liver- Livermore as the Devil. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucy Clifford, the Witch. Beth Armstrong, Salvation Army Santa. No, we already said her. They have her on there twice. Okay. Uh, Aaron Hart as choir number one. And David Jobling as the art teacher. Uncredited. Uncredited. All right. Now let's talk about this dang movie. Because (laughs) that was a giant ass cast. (laughs) It was. Um, the Monster's Scary Little Christmas, everyone, came out December 17th, 1996, as Tivis has already stated. Man, I haven't said that in a while. Um, I know. Uh, the, the, it's, it's, a, it's a Christmas movie, you know? It's, it's a perfect little Christmas film. Uh, very reminiscent of like uh, one of the Brady Bunch movies um, from the 90s. Or very uh, like the Adams Family, like the straight to VHS movies that they did in the late nineties. So, um, what were your thoughts, man? 
Uh, you know, I watched this talk. one with my wife. Uh, okay. She got bored a little bit in the middle and left to go start cleaning stuff to keep herself busy and then came back yeah. towards the end. Right, right, right. So I, it, it was an all right one. Um, I thought the cast was fantastic. Uh, yeah, I could definitely tell between this one and the last one, these two movies are where Sherry got her basis for Lily, the, the mm. gestures and stuff. And after watching these, my criticism of that just plummets like, okay, I can oh, yeah. see. I, yeah. I, I have zero issue with that now. Uh, yeah, no, if, if anyone ever had an issue with uh, uh, Sherry's um, Lily, definitely watch these last two these last two films. Um, it definitely it shows you like you know how where those mannerisms to the extreme come from because they all both of these actresses do it you know in these last two films and then even with um herman in this film i feel like there's a lot of jeff there you know mm. like uh, he does his like weird dancing thing there's even a scene of him in his like bathrobe bro and i'm just like or not in a, his bathrobe but in a robe a silk robe and i'm just like man this is so reminiscent of well we get the exact biker's okay. outfit that they have jeff wearing in rob's yeah. movie yeah with the hat and everything um so uh yeah yeah it, it, you can really tell where some of these ideas could have potentially been taken mm. from. Um, I don't know how big of a fan Rob was of this film or not, so I, I'm not going to. Uh, I mean, say even for if sure, he wasn't a film, know. it's nice that he uh, clearly took some stuff from it. Because I mean, yeah, even the stuff we don't like, someone does. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So I, I can agree with that. Um, I did like though that the intro for this film, you know, it starts out like a generic Christmas film. You see the Christmas stuff and the choir, yeah. and then our first introduction to the family in this one is Herman. I yeah, yeah I my notes are I f was not taking notes at first, so it was about halfway yeah, yeah. through I was scrambling to get all my thoughts down. It's so some good. of these are a little out of order, but. Um, uh, my first one here is I like how we just get right into it. No like introductions to any of the family. We're just, it's like an episode yeah. We're we're just in it. Well, it seems like if this was supposed to be a direct sequel to the last film, there was, there would be no reason to. Um, yeah. Although I feel if this was a direct sequel to the last one, then uh, that house is completely different. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the house is 100% different. Um, uh, so they, they open the, he goes in the house. Uh, did Lily say they make anthrax cookies? <laughs> I do not recall, but it would I, not shock me. She was like, oh yeah, they're, you know, Americans are so health conscious, blah, blah, blah. They went back on that kick cause they did it in the previous film of the health conscious Americans. And she's like, you know, some some people just don't enjoy the great taste of an anthrax cookie. I was like, whoa, dude, because this was 96 and that was a big thing. Nine, yeah, <laughs> well, it got even bigger in the following years. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the uh, Twin Towers fell, they yeah. it went really big again. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I was just like, uh, OK. Um, yeah, I just say. Oh, go on. Oh, no, go and finish your thought. Oh no, go. I was just I was going to jump, jump talk second. about grandpa here, so. Okay, go on, jump into grandpa. Uh I I I enjoyed Sandy's uh reveal as grandpa coming from behind the tree cuz oh, uh -huh. that's terrifying. What Love did it. you think of his grandpa? <laughs> I have a feeling his health wasn't the best cuz grandpa was really sidelined this this is the first story where grandpa has a very minor role in everything. Yeah. In fact, he's pretty lazy. This, this grandpa, th this version of the monsters really, there's no real focus on any of them to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah, um, well, that's true. Like, I feel like Eddie gets a little bit more focus, which is fine. Cause I don't Eddie think was... so because he's like, just so, Maybe well, I the think whole it's his mood story so his is mood all is, about trying yeah. to help, you know, make him feel better about being in America for Christmas this year. Right. Um, so I guess the story kind of goes with Eddie, but like, as far as like 
seeing them and screen time and people actually doing anything, I, the family really isn't the main priority here, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, you have more about the neighbor worrying that she's not going to win the uh, uh, decoration contest. Yeah, and the then, nosy neighbor plot. And, and you have a lot of stuff with like Santa and the elves that we see. Um, but yeah, I. But Eddie is the catalyst for everything that happens in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess so. It's it was interesting though, just to see like the whole idea of it was Grandpa was trying to make it snow, and he couldn't get snow there. And instead, he ended which up which is like, funny because he got it on accident in the TV show, <laughs> right? Um, but they want to try and cheer up Eddie and everything. So where does uh where does Herman go? Uh, to try and cheer Eddie up. What what book well, does he Ed read, Tivis? Oh, I do not recall that. He, he but... picks up an old Sears and Roebuck catalog, which oh. I know Daniel Roebuck has nothing to do with Sears and Roebuck, and it's a real thing. But hey, Daniel, it... at least your last name got into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good coincidence. Um, <laughs> I, it's... Do you want to talk about what all their plans are to try and cheer Eddie up? Because he's really he's he's getting homesick for his life in Transylvania. Yeah, and, and he wrote the note for Santa. He tries to burn the note with splot with splot spot with spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they they he's treating spot like a fireplace apparently. <laughs> yeah, which spot is now living in what was the walkway to the lab. So yeah, yeah. I um, um yeah. Do you do you remember what all their? I mean, we kind of already said Grandpa wants to make snow. I skip from uh, Sears and Roebuck to Lily reminds me of Lily from George Lopez skit. Yes, honestly. yeah, I got that too. Um, some with, same with some of the Herman uh, mannerisms, mannerisms too, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I found that the George Lopez skit was one of the better ones done of of the recreations yeah of them besides our last movie that we watched which uh well, Herman I, this plays cast Herman great. i like they brought their own bits to the characters but i felt yeah. like they were still true to the characters oh, like yeah. i have not seen a miscasting yet other than you know 13 13 mockingbird lane uh that was just a miss uh story direction that's all it was yeah 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 that's not miscasting. I mean, those actors could have possibly portrayed it if they were given a comedy script and, you know, yeah. to do something better. But anyway. Um, okay, so what, the, what, what are they going to do to make Eddie well, feel better? Well, as you said, Grandpa's making snow. Uh, Herman wants to uh, present. He wants to get Eddie the best present that will make him happy. You know, yeah. he's like, he, he, he imagines it. Even he gets like drunk on eggnog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Lily wants, she's going to decorate the house. That's how they get into the altercations with the neighbor. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to have him help me decorate. And Marilyn's idea is if he's missing the old family, let's invite the family here, which is brilliant by the way. Uh, yeah. And got me super excited because I'm like, yes, more extended family and actually family members this time who were not named in the credits, which I blame someone in production. You screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that was awesome to, to hear that. Uh, they do mention grandpa mentions, uh, don't invite the Egyptian. He's in the pyramid <laughs> schemes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. I was just like, okay. that's like the first one she sends. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which I, I got to call during... it. It reminded oh. me of the second movie with the, the Pharaoh. Yeah. With the mummy. I got that vibes. Well, there's a perfectly great reason then why Rob put the freaking mummy thing in his movie, like the mummy restaurant and everything. Yeah. And, and the mummy is even by the end of this movie, we see an actual mummy. The mummies are very reminiscent of what these guys look like. Mm. And, uh, yeah, 
I was impressed. Um, yeah. So uh, Herman needs to try and make extra money. So he tries to get Mr. Gateman to give him a, a, <laughs> in the, a, a what? What, what? What would you call it? A Christmas bonus. A Christmas bonus, yes. Uh, no, not a bonus. A, uh, to advance. give him his pay ad- advance. There we go. Uh, I don't know these things because I work for myself and my wife. So <laughs> my advance is go work. Brag more. some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he tries to get an advance. And this is where we see Mr. Gateman is an asshole. And he's freaking crazy, man. He's just like... <laughs> These stupid ordinances made it so people aren't dying, so I'm not going to make my rent this month, basically. <laughs> I'm like, what, what, why is Mr. Gateman such a dick? Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of this version. Like, if yeah. we get another Rob movie, I hope he moves away from... like The creepy, weird Mr. Gateman, I will take over this. <laughs> But see, we don't know that that was actually a creepy, weird Gateman or just him in costume because it was a costume party. We I kind of get see... the feeling that's just him. <laughs> we Well, we just never see uh, Gateman, Goodbury, or Graves in that one since they're three guys outside of their costume. Like, they make the dark jokes and the stupid things, but who's to say, you know, that just wasn't part of their, you know, their thing? I would prefer it to be. <laughs> Um, uh, Herman uh, then goes off and he tries to figure out ways to get money by doing uh, random jobs again jobs and stuff yeah anytime uh, you see Herman looking at a uh, now hiring sign you know something bad is going <laughs> to follow yeah, yeah. I, I don't recall every single one he goes to but I did take a note down um, Herman he destroys trying... that oh, lady's present I remember that yeah uh, he he tries to give blood to give money. Oh yeah, money. yeah. He costs that hospital so much money. <laughs> Herman Herman is in the show, as I recall. He was afraid of needles. In this one, he's just like he's afraid whatever. of fire. He's just again afraid of fire, right? Yeah. Which I love the comedic effect of that. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Uh. All right, that's my last note until we get to Santa Slay. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff out of order, like I said. So the next one I got is uh, when Herman's snoring, he's pulling the fire towards him straight out of the TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, stri- like you said, straight from the TV show. It's also yeah. towards the end of my notes a little bit here. Uh, where is it? Herman reminds me of Al Bundy. <laughs> yes, he puts his hand in his pants. I have that. Married with children. <laughs> married with children al bundy he he even has like the same brown slacks because herman's slacks are brown and he just like tucks his hand in. and the way he like sits in the chair non-stop is just like very lazily laid back i wonder mm-hmm. if he had to do that just because the actor couldn't actually sit upright in the chair with the pads on and stuff um, um as we have heard from fred's experience it's it's very hard to do yeah oh uh, uh, grandpa's makeup, like you could see where it stops on his neck sometimes yeah. and stuff. And like, even though it's not great, it feels right for this show. Uh huh. Yeah. My kid asked, <laughs> so pained. My, my kid asked, why does grandpa look so old? It's because he is in this one. <laughs> because, you know, he's, he, he watched the Rob Zombie when he's seen that one several times. And he's just like, why is grandpa just old? And uh, yeah, I agree. He's a vampire. <laughs> I, I don't know if, you know, all respect to the, 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 the actor and stuff. I just don't know if he was the right casting for it. Yeah, uh, I'm glad he was able to, because uh, the parts we do get with him, I did enjoy. Uh-huh. It's just like I said earlier, I feel like maybe his health was already starting to decline. Because yeah. This is the least we've gotten of Grandpa his, in anything Monsters related. His voice was off-putting. I got like I know it's that I know that actor, so I've heard his voice before, but I, his voice was just kind of off-putting for that character. Um, yeah. It, as especially seeing from what we've had in the past already, not with just Al, but with uh, the previous movie and. Uh, I'm assuming what we're going to get with uh, monsters today when we watch that finally. So 
uh, you know, there's just, I, it was just something off putting about like the smoker voice, you know, kind of. It's yeah. like, I don't know. I, you know. I always look at it like, can I transplant any of the other actors into this role and it would be right. the same? Uh, so I guess what I'm looking at is the writing, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The writing, like, I, I the, the writing was almost to par with for grandpa i guess like he had some of the mannerisms here and there too. i could see al lewis mm. saying a lot or doing a lot of the stuff that he did yeah there were there were some uh, there's a couple of things he does say that i'm just like i could totally see al lewis's character doing it but not al lewis himself saying certain things that come out of this guy's mouth yeah. um <laughs> which see because there's a joke that comes out that it was 96 so i was like okay i get it but yeah um well let's go to his grandpa's sleigh the elves are there grandpa's well, trying to before he gets to the house right. um the elves are cheering for silicone they say they say they want to go to the sandy <laughs> yeah, the beaches. elves are perverted they, they want to go to the sandy beaches where the women are surgically enhanced and then they start chanting silicone silicone <laughs> like these elves are the worst yeah so bad there, <laughs> there's and then my last next note is these elves are pervs when they get there and yep, uh that's what they're I got. trying Perverted to like, elves. look up Marilyn skirt and stuff yeah that's crazy i like how santa he's like he takes everything in stride in this movie, but yeah. certain comments yeah. make it like when she's like, you don't want to accidentally turn into a toadstool or something. He looks at grandpa like you, you that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on when he's like doing a potion and he's puts the Geiger counter over, he's like, yep, yeah, that's radioactive. Grandpa's just like, Oh shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> he right. goes in like hides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was great. Um, I do have one more note from before Santa arrives, though. Uh, Eddie, his bed is in the cupboard, and my wife just turns to look yeah. and she's like, "Oh, he's the original Harry Potter." Because <laughs> <laughs> I told her about how he would just hide the cabinets and stuff in the original yeah. show <laughs> they, for they, no they, reason. They try to put in these like small little hints to the show, like nods, like mm. him being in the cabinet. So they just made it his bed. I <laughs> say, so, okay. Um, and we got Spot's eyes when we see Spot underneath the stairs. Mm. Uh, the darn, darn, darn. Except this Herman says it when he's pissed off. <laughs> like, not just like, oh, darn, darn, it, it darn. His uh, imagination saying it to him. Right. Uh, um, does he say it a second time later on? I can't remember. I think yeah, he, he says it a couple of times in this movie. Yeah. Uh, and then... Like we at the end, of course, we get the the busting through the door. <laughs> Poor door knocker. <laughs> don't remember seeing a mirror break though. I don't remember. No, I think that. they that was the one gag they didn't bring over. And he only did the uh, classic laugh like once in this mm. entire movie. And it, he was all right at it. It it was not good. It I was, was all right. It wasn't. That I was bad. disappointed. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, when Santa <laughs> meets the rest of the family finally, because they try to keep him a secret, but it doesn't last long. Uh, you know, he's Herman comes down. He Herman's all excited. Why didn't you tell me Santa's here? Yeah, <laughs> Lily yeah. just seems indifferent, and Eddie's like, "Oh, great, this guy." Yeah, Eddie looked kind of annoyed, scared, and confused, <laughs> like mm -hmm. all at once, and. Uh... He just started backing away, like, "Yep, I'm gonna go now." <laughs> I just wanted Christmas over, and now we got Christmas itself here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was um, once we got to Santa Claus being in, and especially with the how outside being decorated and stuff, and the, all of that going on, uh, this started to feel a bit like Nightmare Before Christmas to me. I could see that a little bit, like they were trying to make christmas more their style mm. right like with the scary elements and stuff like that um i could totally see this being like an adams family decor honestly yeah this it felt very adams family to me because because we've seen the monsters christmas like it, uh with the original cast yeah very 
very briefly. subtly. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything like super scary. And we didn't even super... know it was uh, like a Christmas episode yeah. until the <laughs> end. That was yeah. the one where Grandpa runs away, was <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah. And Grandpa ran away, and then we get them opening presents at the end uh, around the Christmas tree and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so my next note is when Santa's cheering Eddie up. So I, uh, now we're kind of going in order of the movie. Well, first, before we do that, when they're outside looking at decorations, I gotta say this. Yeah, go um, she goes, uh, so is there any luck of, you know, finding a, a midnight job or whatever, or moonlighting job? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, plenty of it. All bad. <laughs> that, that needs to be on the shirt. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the one thing we skimmed over when Marilyn's ma- mailing the invites to yeah. the family more evidence for your theory as she caused destruction the entire street that she walks down. Yeah, uh, everybody's just staring at her and falling over on themselves. The and chimney being sweep. Just... The... Ugh, it's... Why is there a chimney sweep in the 90s? People still use their chimneys then. Although well, it's I California, have... I'm not sure why they were... <laughs> <laughs> needing a chimney at the moment because it didn't oh well it was winter time so it does get cooler there but she's like in a short skirt the entire freaking movie yeah dude. cooler is like what high 60s crying a river California. people i think it gets colder and... there because they're like right on the bay too yeah i suppose I mean, I'm yeah. we're surrounded by lakes up here, so it, we get it worse than you guys. <laughs> I've never been to California, so if people out there live in California or have, let us know how cold does it get around Christmas time there. You know, the my comments. wife has a friend that lives in Georgia who says she'll never live in a state that goes below 60. I'm like, oh, please, you don't know what cold is. <laughs> Georgia goes below 60, though. Apparently not where she lives, at least not very often. That's bullshit. It goes below 60 here in Florida. That person's yeah, lying you to you. You choose to this. live in Florida. That person's lying. To you you have this. water on three sides of your state. I know. I live on a I live on the penis of America, okay? I get it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think right. I broke Tivis again. Um, <laughs> Just so uh movie. Uh, I say Marilyn is Herman's sister again, and uh, Herman's sister's daughter in this one yeah, again. Yep, yeah. continuation. Um, we find that out at the door. Um, let's dive on into this whole thing. Oh wait, before we dump into it, she forgets to drop uh, cousin Phantom of the Opera's invitation in the mailbox, and the guy later has the invitation. Still, that's how he finds out her house. We How know the that... hell did cousin know to come to their house? Because he's annoying. We know that from a previous movie. He's just <laughs> nobody wants him there. He shows up I was, early. I was hoping in fact, that it's they... probably a blessing they didn't send it. I was hoping that they the reason that they didn't do that was because they didn't want him to like come <laughs> and sing and all that shit. Like I was thinking in my mind, oh, they're not gonna do that because we've already had him visit before and then the previous <laughs> film. And we don't want that shit. Like, okay. But no, he shows up anyways. They all show up, Tivis. Um, <laughs> Santa gets turned into a fruitcake, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to that, I want to talk. He, 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 him and Eddie have this conversation that cheers yeah. Eddie up finally after Santa finds the burnt remnants of his uh, uh, Christmas list. And when he's talking about the bully at school, Santa says that he's that kid is on his deer or coal and deer dropping list. What? Yeah. yeah. This is new to me. <laughs> uh <laughs> deer droppings? Um, well, reindeer droppings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he puts shit in stockings. Why not? If you act like a shitty person, you get shitty gifts. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like punishment for the whole family, not just the person receiving, but you know, not if it's like magical reindeer shit and it only stinks to the person who touches it. And then he's the only one who touches it because he reaches in his stocking. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> 
my next note is something I want to just get out of the way because it's a very minor subplot, but it's a uh, Herman versus the Carolers through this whole film. He gets so mm. upset. He wants to hear the end of their songs. Every single time he goes out there, they go running. <laughs> yeah. And he tries to join in every time too. Yeah. And he even joins in with the nuns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, HOA suck. <laughs> I didn't get to say it this episode yet, so I'm going to. Do they to. have an HOA? Yeah, the HOA is the judging committee. Oh, I didn't. I did not catch that one. Yeah, they they say homeowners association like, like a... five times in the movie. I guess so. It makes sense. Yeah, and I thought that the weird artsy people were the judges at first. And I'm like, yeah, God, did they have some weird people on their committee? Yeah, I didn't understand the point of those guys coming in there unless the guy wanted like to have their input as the uh, the smart um, artsy guys so that he could like show off to the rest of the committee and stuff and just pretend that, you know, he knew yeah. what he was talking about. Um, Michael, uh, Marilyn's psychological damage returns this episode because the one biker dude calls her... Uh, uh, pretty and then she goes to the ground somebody said i'm pretty she's a yeah. well yeah probably on the inside <laughs> yep and, and she's like really confused by it she doesn't know how to react to it because she's been told that she's it's like so sad it's this is like if this is the saddest part of all of these yeah yeah this is um one of those things where you're like marilyn needs to see a shrink she needs really bad help <laughs> She needs to get away from her family. It's toxic. <laughs> it's a toxic yeah. environment for her. Well, no, because they all love her still, no matter what she looks like. Uh, but the Grandpa's... way they treat her is kind of meh. Yeah. Um, Grandpa's more useless than normal. Uh, Santa. Okay, now we finally get to one part where you were. Uh, Santa is easily tricked with food. <laughs> yep. Like, Turned into hey, a Santa, cake. It's snack time. Did someone say snack? And, well, the, the 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 elf even uses Marilyn's voice <laughs> yeah, to does. trick her in there, trick him into coming in there. Um, and then we get Santa runs in and he turns into a, a giant ass fruitcake. And then they're like, "Well, what happened?" And then they realize they use the dessert transmog transmogification serum. Which I love how that comes back at the end. <laughs> Why do you have that? I don't know. It's something I wanted to do. What I told you about doing. No, no, no. Point. That's not what Grandpa says. And this is what fucked me up. <laughs> he said, I just wanted to make, uh, turn you into a fruitcake is a cure so you don't become a fruitcake. <laughs> I was just like, the fuck? This joke would not work today. Like, yeah, Herman's so like messed up. I told you not to make frivolous potions. She's like, oh yeah, it was like the one you told me to make. <laughs> Herman's like, you know, that's different. <laughs> but but there's so many like <clears throat> homosexual like the fruitcake stereotype. Oh, you know, I did people. not get that. Yeah, yeah. The, they 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 say it uh, several times, um, and then like uh, there's one time at the bar, a biker bar of all places too which completely looks like a gay bar from back in the day. <laughs> um, what was it? The blue oyster from a, a police Academy. Uh, it, that's what it reminded me of. But then like, they're like talking to the elves and be like, you turn Santa into a fruitcake. And they give each other this like, kind of look like it was a joke type, like fruitcake is and get, I was like, man, like this joke yeah even in the 96 like i was like I, I don't think i would have laughed at it in 96 either it, it, i think they were just trying to push push it too hard you know yeah and this is coming from someone who has a gay brother so i'm just like i i just eh, wasn't that funny like i've heard some good gay jokes that, that, yeah, that one went one. right over my head i completely forgot about that term entirely it's because you're a fruitcake <laughs> In yeah. in a uh, non gay I, way possible. Like, I like how they're like, well, what do we do if someone tries to eat him? Yeah. Who likes fruitcake? <laughs> like, that's fair. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, 
Because it is a disgusting food that I don't know I don't, why anyone would I've eat. I've ever eaten it, but I do know just the little fruitcakes are pretty heavy. In, in you could weight. kill someone with them. So I'm like, this giant fruitcake, because Santa turns into a <clears throat> big, fat, like, rounded fruitcake. Mm -hmm. uh, some would call him a bear. Um, <laughs> now see, you're now that's a funny joke. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's this giant fruitcake, and I'm just like, that thing has to weigh, like, 100 pounds. Yeah. And they pick it up. Like, I get Lily picking up and Herman picking up, but the neighbor chick... Yeah, the neighbors like steals it, and then no, she no, goes. They give it to her. Oh, do they? That's how she gets it. Yeah, yeah. I must have um, looked away during this because I just remember she had it. So they can't. <sighs> they they uh, after he turns into a cake, Herman almost eats him. <laughs> He's about to take a knife to him, and then um, everybody is walking around. All the 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 what do they call the the judges are judging the house. And uh, Lily then finds out that the neighbor's out there, and she's like, I don't have anything to give her. I need something to give her. And she rushes in, grabs the giant fruitcake, and gives that to her as a present. And then the lady goes back over to her house with all the judges, and they have some eggnog. Yeah, she tries to bribe them. And she's trying to... Um, <clears throat> secure her winning spot. I don't have them down here. But she's trying to use, like, a giant... Uh, knife like 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 a giant knife like this if you can see on For camera people audio listeners mike just pulled out a combat knife <laughs> she's trying to use one like this to cut the cake and i'm just like yeah that's uh and then she actually it, it starts moving <laughs> yeah that's when we find out santa's still sapient um right he starts yelling at her and then she takes it and tries to drown him in the air <laughs> yeah she's she like oh she looks like a psychopath just drenched in eggnog holding this cake yeah and she tries to she says oh that there's should a be computer your, uh, chip your there's image there. for our uh thumbnail this week the drowning of the cake just her standing there holding it <laughs> Yeah, she um she tries to say that there was a computer chip in there and that's what making that's what making the uh that's what's making the animatronic move. There we go. Trying you were to gonna feed us out. an animatronic. <laughs> right? <laughs> it starts moving again. Uh and she does poke it actually too. Yeah. And that's when it freaks out more. Um and they all leave because they're like, She's crazy, guys. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> So uh, they take off, and she's left there covered in eggnog and uh, holding a giant fruitcake and a knife. Or did she put the knife? No, she put the knife down by now. So, yeah. Um, and she runs off, and uh, she takes the fruit. Or they're all looking for Santa now because they can't find him. And yeah, they, they even, are. like turn oh eddie into a freaking like uh scent dog <laughs> yeah they have him looking around uh herman finds like the local drunk santa claus and pokes it <laughs> like yeah. hey is it you um but in that conversation about the potion frivolous potions mm -hmm. i forget whatever herman asked grandpa to make he was like oh I, little orphan annie was in trouble you know i had to find out yeah so like throw back to the tv show yeah <clears throat> um and then uh, they're they just can't they, find they, they find they do eventually get the the fruit cake back and they realize do, it's she, him. She brings it back, and then the fruit cake is moving, and then they realize it's him. And then they're trying to find the potion for yeah, they turn uh, him to turn Grandpa <laughs> back. They go down to the turn lab Santa where back. or turn Santa back. Yeah, sorry. They go down to the lab where the elves have destroyed it, uh, and I love the the. The clip before, after they turned fr uh, Santa to a fruitcake, they're like, uh, we're going to go down and redecorate the, the lab. And the one elf is just like, oh, yes, we could do this and move this around and give it more space. It would be super spacious. And I'm just like, Larry okay. is being his lefty. <laughs> lefty is an asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but... 
after yeah they go down there realize everything's broke so lily's like all right i'm gonna try my hand at this here's a book to make things simpler because you know grandpa is useless right so and she's she like i, I watched book. grandpa do it you know, my <laughs> whole childhood so i can figure this shit out she turns him into a tree a turkey a pumpkin <laughs> she's like, i'm getting further and further away from the holiday now <laughs> yeah the jack-o'-lantern is what it was yeah uh, they're like we uh, just we need elf and magic <laughs> Eventually, they get. Um, oh, they do turn him back to normal before they yeah. get the elves. Yeah. yeah. The last thing Grandpa is before he gets turned back to or Grandpa Santa is before he gets turned back to Santa is a dog. Uh, so yeah, I feel Eddie should have been able to communicate with him then, right? Maybe I don't know, <laughs> but uh, don't know how that works. Yeah. yeah so, so Santa gets changed back. Uh, and then they do their whole thing. Yeah, they, they talk about how they need elf magic to get him back to the North Pole or to get sleigh moving or presents or something. I don't know. Yeah. I get the no, impression no, they, they, they these are the only elf two. Magic. They need elf magic to do everything. He can't get yeah, around I... at fast. He can't um, make that many presents. He can't do all that stuff without elven magic. Yeah. So it's like Santa needs the elves, but the elves also kind of need Santa um, yeah. type deal. Yeah, I get the, the feeling these are the only elves he has working for him. Uh, um, but the elves show back up and they make this contraption with well, all the guys from they, the bar. They go and get them from the biker bar first. Yeah. That's where we get Herman in his biker outfit. And yep. Uh, the elf is being at, they're like, no, we're not doing it. We need, we deserve a vacation for once, whatever. And then right. they change their mind. Once this uh, uh, woman walks up to them that they're ogling. And she's like, well, you know, I used to want to be with an elf, but now hearing you guys want to destroy Christmas, uh, screw you. Yeah. And they're like, well, wait, we can save it. No. <laughs> yeah. And they sped their voices up too. In this whole movie, it was, really jarring <laughs> so yeah they're back they're figuring stuff out santa makes a comment about how lefty was hiding behind the paint shed for inspiration which makes me think he huffs paint uh <laughs> <laughs> oh geez <laughs> so there's a build... lot of uh, references in this one that just i'm just like yeah that's what you guys I took it a little wife. too far I'm like, this is a, ki- a family movie. And she turned and looked at me after the elves start being perverted at first. She's like, this is a family movie. I'm like, yeah. Eh. <laughs> well, I mean, I did have to explain the, the one joke to my wife. So I was just like, you had to not- explain it to me. So. No, no, not the fruitcake one. Oh, the, okay. uh, the silicone one. But I also think that she just didn't hear the first part of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the contraption they build, what is it powered by, Mike? Herman's brain. <laughs> Imagination. His childlike Imagination. wonder. Imagination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, it's actually uh, pretty ingenious. They just have him looking through the catalog. He sees yep. a present, thinks about it, and the machine makes it. Yeah. Uh, and, and then they're like, with this, we could, you know, boost uh, productivity, you know, tenfold almost. Yeah. Santa's and... hiring Herman. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, um, like we could give you two months off, elves. <laughs> right, and then uh, the bikers all helped build the machine too, and then yeah. and they're wrapping uh, and throwing them into the bag Gramp- of magic. Yeah, Grandpa and Herman go out and steal a sleigh because <laughs> Santa needs a sleigh. I, this is classic, classic monsters. This yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, what are we gonna do when the cops pull us over? We'll just tell him we're taking it for Santa. And what inevitably happens? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought for sure Grandpa was going to turn into a bat and just leave her. Leave again? <laughs> like he did in the, uh, what was the it, one the movie. Second movie? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that happens. Uh, Grandpa tells the cop what Herman said. And then the cop is not believing he's not, it. You know, he's like saying it to him like, we're just taking it for Santa Claus to save Christmas. <laughs> yeah. It's like you sound like the most deranged person on the planet. <laughs> you dressed in a Dracula costume in a sleigh <laughs> on Christmas night. You just look like you're a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So then Herman steps out the vehicle, scares the shit out the officer, and he takes off. Apparently, 
I'm assuming his partner drove the car away. Or yeah, because he gets out of the passenger side. Okay, did he? Yeah. I, I didn't see. I, I was like, did the car just drive away? Or is it? <laughs> yeah, no. He, yeah, he gets out of the passenger side. It would have been funnier if his car just drove away. <laughs> I, to me, I'm like, oh, they remember when they arrested him last time. <laughs> and he, the dog version of him destroyed the police department. <laughs> right. Uh, but oh, yeah, because get... it's supposed to be a secondary film from that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, the, we get this whole thing about how which if well, this was how supposed to, make hold this, on hold on if this yeah. was supposed to be a sequel then that means that Marilyn and the one officer didn't work out oh that's sad. no it didn't I'm sorry Marilyn you just yeah. can't hold down a man <laughs> you don't um, need that man to rule your life you can be so, happy without a man Marilyn <laughs> very true you should be happy with yourself first uh what was I saying? Oh, the, the sleigh. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get the sleigh back and they're like, well, how are you going to make it fly? He's like, it's the reindeer that do it. And then immediately bullshit. It's not the reindeer. It's elf magic because instead of reindeer, they have yeah. what? <laughs> they use all the bikers. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, when, when they start taking off too, I was like, are they on bicycles or are they just walking? <laughs> they're on Pelotons. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure I what they were glasses. on, if they were on anything or if they were just supposed to be marching in place because they didn't show a, a, a Under, thing. Yeah, they don't their show them from the waist anything. down at all. Yeah. And uh, he says so, their names, but I didn't write it down. <laughs> yeah. And Herman's like, well, what if uh, some lucky person gets to ride with you as a passenger? He's like, that's a great idea. Starting <laughs> next year, we'll take one lucky kid. And Herman's like, Oh, that's real lucky for them. <laughs> yeah. Can, Santa's can like, hold on. This is something that <clears throat> my brother would have said <laughs> if he was still alive today. He would have said, the fact that Santa is using a bunch of brawly guys in leather as his reindeer, and they called Santa a fruitcake earlier, that 100% Santa is just straight up gay. <laughs> Well, it didn't help that they put the little thing in their mouth to make it look like BDSM gear. Right? <laughs> oh, I wish my brother. I, I hope my brother watched this movie when uh, when he was younger, and I, I I really wish he was alive so I could talk to him about that scene. <laughs> uh, if you guys out there, if any of you out there are part of the LGBTQ community or whatever, and you have a uh, input on that scene please let me know I, I would really love to hear what your thoughts are because i don't have my my brother to tell me man we used to joke around all the fucking time about stuff <laughs> uh anyways um yeah so i i think uh that would do it no uh herman wanted to ride along in the sleigh and yeah that's... he's like don't you think that once a year, you know, or that you, haven't you ever thought, Santa, that, you know, maybe you should take somebody a ri on a ride with you? Um, you know, maybe that was their childhood, you know, dream or whatever. And he's like, you know what? Great idea. Boys, take a note. And starting next year, we're going to start doing that. <laughs> One lucky child a year. <laughs> Herman's face just, look, drops. Mm. And, and then that's... Santa... Yeah, that's nice for that kid. <laughs> yeah, that's nice for him. Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> and then Santa um gives Herman a present, and it's a what? It's a Santa outfit, which is the image we have behind us. Yeah. In our, if you're watching the video, uh, and knows. also the cover of the movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's uh, he looks great in it. By the way, just seeing Herman in that outfit. Uh, speaking of outfits, uh, for people watching the video, this is Herman in his uh, leather jacket and stuff. Um, I thought I would share that one because it's super reminiscent of, uh, well, I guess Jeff's would be super reminiscent of this yeah. with the hat and everything and the white shirt under. There he is. Yep. Um, so Santa and Herman go off and deliver the presents. Yep. And uh, Herman. <laughs> Herman's directing up. the sleigh. Yeah, and then He's, um to the left he goes right. 
it's just a again it's just a bunch of these guys biker guys <laughs> pulling the sleigh it's got like on who, did they use their magic did they use their magic to get these guys to like be okay doing this or and that's her uh santa even asked these like or uh, herman's like are you guys okay doing this and the guy at the front's like yeah santa promised me a choo choo right. see at least <laughs> at least herman was wor- uh worried about consent so yeah. good for you herman <laughs> uh but yeah he wakes up and it's time for the family get together yeah um uh, he wakes up on the guillotine and the guillotine yes, he falls does. down as soon as herman sits up so cool uh herman goes into the house and then go on well we get a, a shot of all the family member that we listed at the beginning of the episode you know we got gilbert there lester i swear there's a confederate soldier in the right hand corner if you watch when he's walking in uh <laughs> don't understand that one yeah <laughs> um, um uh, hunchback i saw uh, visible man down. obviously yeah yeah there there's so many <laughs> of them there there's like a wizard do they even make reference to rosemary rosemary's baby and rosemary uh, and and then herman goes over to rosemary's baby in the in the uh cradle and he's like yep not changing that diaper <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. As with the last one, we end this one with them dancing. And Lily does the exact same dance that does we she? see in Rob Zombie's movie. Okay. Like, it uh, is the exact dance. The whole. Um, real quick. There's a special for you people watching the video. They're, they're, they're. Uh, I want to go back real quick to when the yes. elves are putting presents into the um, bag for Santa mm-hmm. uh, to make it magical. They wiggle their noses like Samantha from Bewitched. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was awesome. They even do the freaking Bewitched noise. like Boo! They do. Uh, we get to see the Munster Coach. Uh, it's not the original Munster Coach, but it's a variation of the Munster Coach. Mm. Um, when they go get the sleigh. Um, I said, how did Cousin Phantom or the Opera even show up when his invite didn't get mailed out? Uh, and mistletoe under and over top of uh, Marilyn is made of actual toes. Did not notice that. I saw that. I was like, wait, wait. Because I, I saw like colors and stuff. I was like, oh, those are toes. And my wife's <laughs> like, what? I was like, missile toes. <laughs> And it's just like because they have like a few leaves with the mistletoe, but then there's actual toes hanging there too, uh, with um, nail polish. So it's like red and green nail polish <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> and I think they were all big toes too, the big fat toes. Anyways, um, let's move forward because I know we got to get going here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Santa makes it snow, and then the monsters win yeah. the house. Uh, Grandpa fails to make snow the entire movie. <laughs> yep. Grandpa does not make the snow happen. Um, and then Which is very indicative to his magic. It does yeah. not work when he wants it to. Yep. Very. Uh, and that's it. We end the show that way. The monsters win the thing and they're off. Till next Christmas. Uh, oh, you didn't. We didn't mention the crow is also a robot in this one as yep. well. Yeah. So. Oh, they also do a, an Edgar reference when someone knocking on. Who's knocking on my door? <laughs> yeah. Um. That said, guys, I th- I think that's it, right? Yeah. For so all we year? got left is to rank. That we got to rank them. Oh, we're All five movies. These movies. Shit, I forgot about that. Okay, uh, let's do uh, it. You want me to go while you think about yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead. Go, go, go. Um, <clears throat> clearly, five I think mo- five movies. Yeah, five movies. Yeah. Um, so I gotta go with uh, Monsters Go Home is the best out of all of these. I think. Yeah. Then I would probably go. Here come the monsters. Followed by Rob Zombie's movie. Then this scary little Christmas and uh, sadly uh, Monsters Revenge. It's it, it's great. It's got the original cast, but it's just not as well put together as the rest of these. Still enjoyable, but not as good. 
So wait, you said Rob Zombie and then what one? Uh, I went uh, Monster Monsters Go, Go Home, Home. Here Come, Rob Zombie, Christmas. And, and then, then Monster's Revenge. Revenge. Okay. Um, and if we're including Marine Land, that's at the very bottom. No, I wouldn't record. <laughs> uh, that's not one of the movies. I would add in um, Monster's uh, shorts, the, the cartoon. Sorry. Mini Monsters? Um, mini Monsters. So if we're going to uh, do... That one would probably be the bottom just because... Okay. You didn't like this. Did you watch the longer version of that or the short? Yeah, I did. I watched the longer. Okay. Mosier was the one who watched the shorter. Um, So I will go uh, Monsters Go Home for me. First one, number one. Uh, Here come... Hmm. Hmm. Here come the monsters, because that's the election one that we just watched, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, I'll do. Here come the mon- monsters. Go home. Here come the monsters. Rob Zombie's uh, monsters. Um, and then the oh, shit. Uh, Christmas or revenge? Christmas or revenge? To this, I don't. I think we're on the same par. I gotta go. Christmas, revenge, and then mini monsters. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so because uh, Monsters Go Home is you know top tier, still original cast minus Marilyn. Um, great film to cap off the uh, show and everything. And then Here Come the Monsters was probably the best version that we got of the monsters to correlate with the original. Still, like mm-hmm. not not the original story or whatever, but the actual mannerisms, characters, and all that stuff. I mean. Her, Herman playing Herman is just genius. First of all, yeah. <laughs> um, Rob Zombie's awesome film. I've watched it many a times now, probably 14, 15 times now. Uh, definitely uh, one of my uh, films that I love to watch over and over again. Um, uh, Christmas. This one was really good. It wasn't like the best. I think that the perv stuff from the elves could have been cut or cut down at least. Yeah. Uh, we didn't need all that, especially coming off of Here Come the Monsters, where we did a very political thing. And then now this one, it went very. Uh, all over the place. All over the place. Yeah, it wasn't really. It, it, it was just confusing a little bit. And then Revenge. You know what? No, I think I'm going to put Revenge over Christmas. I'll okay. put revenge over Christmas. Monsters revenge over the Christmas one because I think no, that the fair. the elves, the pervy elves, kind of put it out for me. I mean, this is still going to probably most likely be a film that we watch yearly for Christmas for our annual Christmas movies and stuff. Um, I'll definitely do that. But uh, revenge, I think, was a uh, even though it was all over the place too. I think it was still a little bit better of a a film um, than the Christmas one story wise. Yeah, if I'm trying to remember, yeah, and then of course, Mini Monsters is going to be last, not because of its animation, but it it was all it's of, just the it story wasn't, wasn't that yeah. great. Yeah, there wasn't a great story. They introduced it was fun, but without yeah. like focusing, they didn't focus on the main characters, but introduced new characters and focused more on them. Yeah, and I think that's the detriment to the Christmas one too. Is we didn't focus on the people we already knew, the characters we knew. As much as I would have liked. Uh, that's that's why I think I have to put put revenge before it. So um, with that said, guys, please let us know your order of uh, those films. Monsters Go Home, Monsters Revenge, Here Come the Monsters, Rob Zombie's Monsters, and Mini Monsters. Uh, those, let us know your order for those. I said them in order as they came out. So You skipped uh, the Christmas. Did I? Oh, yeah. Christmas. <laughs> And the and, and Monsters Christmas, sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, Tivis, this has been awesome. Uh, we won't be talking about Monsters on the podcast. We might do a video maybe if we get bored or something uh, in the month of December. So, um, but this is the last episode right now, guys, until uh, the uh, the new year. So yeah. we will see you guys in 2023 with more Monsters content as we start Monsters Today. Yeah. Um, and be sure to check out our other show, uh, Operation Babel, which we will be yes. continuing for a little bit into the New Year's. Uh, we have, then we might take a little break from that. But We have uh, 
two episodes left this year of that as well that will be yep. coming out um in one the same week that this episode drops most likely and uh one for christmas as well guys um if you guys want to check that out too the christmas episode we haven't said it on operation babble yet so we'll say it here too the christmas episode we will be talking about the santa claus franchise the tim allen santa claus franchise yep. to go along with the new show that is on disney plus so um continuing the christmas theme to continue the christmas theme anyways uh tibis any final words man uh i had a lot of fun watching all these movies awesome same here um th this could not have been a, a better end to our year and we hope that you guys didn't miss us too much for the two weeks that we we're gone because now we're going to be gone for four weeks <laughs> at least sorry <laughs> uh, um yeah so uh with that said guys we will catch you all next time as we take another stroll down 1313 mockingbird lane <laughs>